section we will talk about what are functions why need functions how we can create them how to define them and which types of parameters they can receive a function is a set of instructions that performs a specific task functions are executed by calling them from another part of the code a class method or other function functions can be called as many times you need for example you may have a function that causes the computer to beep you may want the computer to beep both when the user hits the wrong key and when the user has a new email message. You can call the same beep function from the both places. This saves you having to write the logic for doing the beep twice. It also keeps your code well organized. Indeed, breaking up a large piece of code into several small functions can improve readability, ease of maintenance, and ability to identify specific areas that are performs bottlenecks. What does a function look like? Well, you have already seen the main function, it's look like this. The first part is title or function name, whatever you say. Right after that, parentheses that are empty here, but in later we will see that they can also contain parameters. The code between curly brace is the meat of our function, that is the actual code that will be executed when our function is called. Now, let's see how to define functions in Dart. Okay, so first I'm gonna define function name, let's say great. Functions may have no parameters as in the aforementioned in main function. Does the grid function may need any information to determine how it works? Perhaps it doesn't. Actually, the grid function may need to know how it should grid someone. In that case, we should need to provide it with that information. The information would be provided via a function parameter. So, I'm gonna define a argument or parameter, whatever we say, let's say title. Please remember here, we have to specify its data type, let's say string, when the grid function is later called with a certain title, it will then be its job to grid people for the title. Now in between curly brace, let's add a print statement, let's type double quotes, welcome to dollar sign to insert title variable. Right after that, course. Now we only execute this function from our main program, so for that, we only need to call the grid function here, like this. As you can clearly see, the function required a parameter, so it would be passing the string literal dart to grid function to fill in the parameter title. Now, if we run this program, we should see welcome to dart course. There you go. We get the same text here. Functions need not to be limited to zero or one parameter. They can contain any number of parameters. May need to tell viewers which version of Dart course is it. So we can do like this. Data type double and argument name or parameter version. And every parameter would be separated by a comma. Now I'm gonna insert this variable in print statement. So dollar sign version. As you can clearly see, two positional arguments expected. The function record one more position for double value. So I'm gonna set it to 2.13. The second position for second record parameter and the first position for first record parameter. Now let's run this program and see what we get. There we go. We get the version as well. Any function could receive required or optional parameters. These are required parameters. Optional parameters are optional in that the caller isn't required to specify a value for the parameter when calling the function. As we know optional parameters can be of two different types which are positional arguments and named arguments. Let's see first example of positional optional parameters. Positional parameters are enclosed between square bracket and follow the same description as the required parameters, data type and parameter name. Square bracketed parameters are optional. Whenever we will define positional optional parameter, we must have to set its default value. 
So I'm gonna set its default value here. We use equal sign to specify default value of an optional parameter. So here single quotes or double quotes in in between quotes we set it to an exclamation mark. So this is the example of positional optional parameter. Now we are gonna insert this variable in print statement. So just add dollar sign right after that exclamation mark. Let me make this window a little bit smaller to see clearly. As you can see here only two parameters but we have defined three parameters. To be clear let me add the function again. Here two parameters required but we have defined three parameters. So this is an optional parameter. Get rid of this now and let's run this program and see what happened. There we get an exclamation mark with positional optional parameter. Now it's time to see example of named optional parameter. They really are very useful because you don't need to call the function in the same way as with positional optional parameters. And this kind of parameter improves the documentation of the function. When a function has a long list of parameters, it's hard to remember the position and meaning of these parameters. So it's better to use named optional parameter. Named optional parameters are wrapped by curl brace and same as record parameter. The type parameter name. It's also required to set its default value, but here we will not use equal sign. Here we will use colon. Please remember here we will use equal sign for positional optional parameters and we will use colon for named optional parameters. So we set it to double quotes and exclamation mark. So this way you can define a named optional parameter. Now I'm gonna insert exclamation variable in print statement. So dollar sign and exclamation variable. As it's a optional parameter when you call the grid function it doesn't record for exclamation parameter. Now if we run this program, there we go. We get exclamation mark as well. Named parameters make for easier to understand call sites. They are referenced by name. So we can reassign a value to the exclamation variable like this. Now let's run this program. There we get the reassigned value of exclamation variable. That's really cool. So these are all about parameters. But here is one thing. Although the code is perfectly fine but it is recommended to follow the direct documentation. Therefore, we should always specify the return type of the function. When we define our functions, thus our function declaration should look like this. Return type can be string, boolean, void, feature, and so on. If no return type is specified in the definition of the function, then it can either return anything or return null value. Now, I'm gonna define it with a string return type. Now, the function has a return statement. Not only can functions receive information by way of parameter, they can also return information to their caller by way of a return value. The return value is preceded by the keyword return. Now we can return value of title. So this is how we can define a function with return type. Now I'm gonna define the function with boolean return type. Now the function can be returned either true or false. Now I'm gonna define the function with void. The void explicitly indicates that the function will not return any value. So get rid of this now. We can also define return type with integer, double, feature, list, and map. To create a function, simply write fe and click on fun. Note that this is a shortcut associated with this task. When I program, I always use this shortcut because that increases my productivity. We can define here function name hi. But specifies this function doesn't return a value. Now it's time to do a little exercise. Imagine if you have a function named multiply that takes two integers as parameters and returns their total as an integer. So pause the video and spend three to five minutes on this exercise. When you are done, come back, continue, and see my solution. Okay, so first we need to define a function. Let's say multiply, open and close parentheses, right after that curly brace. Now in parameters we can specify two integers, 
let's say integer number one and another is integer number two now we wanna multiply these two objects so we can write code like this number one multiply number two that we did in arithmetic operator section now we wanna store the value of multiplication in a integer variable called total as we have to return integer value so we can specify return type of the function integer as its return type specified as an integer the function can return an integer value so let's add return statement and here we can return value of total now i'm gonna execute this function from our main program so for that we only need to call the multiply function here as you can see it takes two required parameters so we need to set its value let's say five for number one position and six for number two position now we wanna see the result on the terminal therefore just grab this statement with the print statement all right now let's run this program and see what we get there we go we get 30. please remember this point when a function reaches return statement it will immediately exit no code in the function will be executed after a return statement is executed let me show you after return statement i'm gonna add print statement as you can clearly see it's dead code this will not be never executed because this function exits here so this is how a function actually works functions take input in the form of parameters and provide output in the form of a return value